call for parents of Canada's sleep-deprived children to bedtime battles through the summer months and crying foul over letting babies cry it out. Our lifestyle panel is here and joining us this evening. Wendy Mueller, publisher of several parenting magazines, including Edmonton's Child. Dr. Gans Ferentz is a registered psychologist with the Ferentz Group. And Judy Arnall, certified parent educator with Professional Parenting Canada. Good evening, you sleepy three. Hello. Uh, we're talking about sleep this panel. All right, for the first time, there are now official recommendations for how much sleep children need each night. Uh, they are from the American Academy of Sleep Medicine. And the expert panel advises anywhere from 8 to 10 hours of sleep for youth aged 13 to 18. And on the other end of the scale, 12 to 16 hours for babies under one year. Okay, Gans, you first. What do you make of these recommendations? I love them. I love them. Uh, the, the, the problem with our culture is that we totally devalue sleep or undervalue sleep. And it's almost like a badge of honor when you, oh, I only got four hours of sleep, I can survive on three hours of sleep. Right, exactly. <laughs> when sleep is actually such a foundational uh, part of a proper healthy lifestyle. It affects your, your immune system, how quickly you heal, um, you know, your cognitive functions, but especially for a developing mind, it's so, so important for the kids and, and teenagers, especially with all their you know, the hormone mix that's happening, it's really important for them to get adequate okay. sleep. So what are the consequences for kids if they're not getting enough sleep? Well, it depends on the age and it depends on, you know, kind of their personality and stuff, but the, the lack of sleep has been linked with behavior problems, problems concentrating, learning difficulties, uh, particularly teenagers, you're looking at anxiety, depression, um, you can have all sorts of uh, social issues as well because if you're tired, you're more irritable, so you don't get along with people, and all these things tend to snowball over time. So you really, and those are just the emotional ones. You know, you also have like the physical ones, like uh, headaches and you know taking a lot to heal and that sort of thing. So I have to thank parents, <laughs> or not parents, sorry, teachers, teachers, the yes. teachers out there be going. Oh, that's mm -hmm. why kids need sleep. Okay, Judy, why why do so many families struggle with kids not getting enough sleep? Well, I think like Gan said, it, it doesn't fit in our culture. Um, a lot of parents are trying to squeeze in activities between getting home from work and getting homework done, getting to bed. Um, so bedtime gets pushed later and later. Um, and also kids want to wind down. They want to, they're on screens a lot till late at night. And best practices are not to have screens one to two hours before bedtime. So that pushes it even later. So kids, especially in teens, naturally their circadian rhythm is moving forward. So it's really hard for them to get sleep before midnight. Um, and then they have to get up the next morning. So ideally, we should change things to meet those recommendations, like maybe school at noon. Mm -hmm. School at noon. Especially <laughs> oh, yeah. for teenagers, yeah. A lot, of kids, that sounds cool. a lot of kids would like that. Now, <laughs> Wendy, if, if, if in fact, our children are getting enough sleep. What does that mean for us as parents? Then we're getting enough sleep. <laughs> I think if our kids are getting enough sleep, to Dan's and Judy's points, they're less irritable, they're functioning better, they're able to find the things that they're looking for. So the cognitive function is there. And as parents, if they're getting enough sleep, um, and I know for us, like to have the younger kids go to bed at a certain time and then to have a little bit, bit of quiet time before we end up going to bed is really important for parents too to have some connection and, and some downtime before we try and hit the hay. Well, and, and Gans, for, for kids who struggle to get to sleep, it, melatonin, melatonin mm -hmm. supplements, mm -hmm. do, you, do, you, do you know anything about that? Is, is that a, how advisable is that to give kids? Well, I mean, you know, it's, it's a supplement, but anything you're giving your kids, you want to be careful with, right? But melatonin, basically what it does, it's the um, brain hormone that's produced to help you sleep. So it helps people soothe, it helps them get uh, quality sleep. Um, so that can be something that uh, you can use, that parents can use. But really, honestly, like uh, a good routine also does really well. <laughs> okay. And to Judy's point as well, consistency, right? Consistency, yeah, going to bed at a regular time. And what, you know, what the findings show is that the earlier you go to bed, the better quality of the sleep there is for the kids. But also they sleep longer, they sleep better. But it really does need to be consistent. I think what we do in our culture is we, we do pretty good on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, but then we fall apart on Saturday, Sunday, and then we're catching up Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and you know, we kind of yeah. keep going that, that cycle, cycle again. Yeah. Okay, if, if bedtime is a struggle on the best of days, it can be even more difficult through the dog days of summer, be it barbecues, bike rides, fireworks at the beach. There are plenty of opportunities 
to relax the rules and break summer sleep routines. So Judy, uh, do you relax the rules in your household? Um, our rules are relaxed all the time. <laughs> um, I think you can um, relax the rules but keep the routine. So um, have a consistent bedtime routine where you have a snack, maybe shower, pajamas, story, um, go to bed. But in summer, it's time off. Like, let them stay up and play. Break, break the rules a bit. Um, I know among the homeschooling community, a lot of the kids regularly don't get to bed before midnight. And they're some of the most um, nicest, non-cranky kids I know. So as long as they get their sleep, it doesn't matter if it's early. Well, early. How, how, how late do you let the kids sleep in then? Oh, they sleep till noon because they don't have to get up for school. So, um, yeah, they rarely get to bed before midnight and sleep till noon. And they're they're happy teens, happy kids. That's interesting to know. Okay, Wendy, are, are you okay with, with letting the uh, sleep routine slide ever so slightly through the summer months? I'm, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of close to Judy on this one that I'm a work-at-home mom. So when I was a working outside of the home and the kids were at home and needed care, they needed to still have the same bedtime routine because I needed to get up for work. So they needed to go to daycare or camp or wherever they needed to be. But now as a work at home mom, yeah, I'm pretty lax on it and, and they stay up late. I have mostly teenagers, but even the 11 year old in the summer months, he'll stay up a little bit later and then he catches up and sleeps in the morning. Okay, but here's here's the key. When summer or summer is coming to an end yes. and school is approaching, then we have you the, need to get back in that routine. Though. Yeah. So how, how many weeks in advance? We usually start two weeks, sometimes three weeks, depending on how crazy it's been over the you know the beginning of August. But two to three weeks of every every couple days, it's an hour earlier, and getting them back to that kind of bedtime that's going to be uh, instrumental in getting them the hours that they need when they're starting to get up for school at oh, six or seven. I can imagine early in August trying to. <laughs> do that. It'd be a little bit of a fight on that. Just a little bit at a time. <laughs> at a time, okay. Gans, your rules of thumb. I, I'm going to be the odd man out here. I, I don't. I don't believe in pushing it too far. Well, so what they know about uh, circadian rhythms, right? So we have once we get into a rhythm, we can probably push it, but m at most there's a sort of a two-hour window. So if, if your regular bedtime's ten, then twelve o'clock's okay. But going beyond that, you start to reset your clock, your internal clock. And then you have the other issue where the quality of sleep you get early in the evening, especially before midnight, is actually quite a bit better than the stuff you get after midnight. So these things do have to factor in when parents are making their decisions about, you know, how late the kids can stay up and if they want to push it. Because, you know, reality is we do have barbecues, we do have all this other stuff. So, you know, this whole idea is not to make parents feel guilty or put more stress on them. But understand best practices and do your best to get within that if you can. So, so key here is that they still get many hours of sleep. Many hours of sleep and better quality before midnight if you can. But if you, sometimes you can't. But okay. but try to stay within two hours either way because then you don't uh, you don't really mess up your clock. All right, we're not done with the sleep talk just yet. Up next, sleep training the littlest members of the family. Is the cry-out method a safe option for infants? More from our lifestyle panel after the break.